and Louisiana State Trooper Casey Wallace joins us today with some safety information. Casey, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having us again. Of course, of course. So it's always important to stay safe in so many different capacities too. Uh, tell us some of the safety tips that are seasonal right now. Yeah, so right now, uh, school is started back. We're in full swing right now. I think all of our parishes have already uh, started started back school. And we touched it uh, last week uh, when you were on vacation or traveling the country. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we covered a little things, but just the things that people keep asking us about the, the bus stop areas and things. And we, we put out diagrams on our Facebook page too, but just kind of like with the bus areas, especially when we start talking about dropping our kids off for school. I was at Buckeye this uh, morning. The, the car lines can get crazy and what I can tell is is that we hadn't had a huge problem but it still is a problem with our car drop-offs just being patient in those car drop-off lines and I know we're a weekend so we should be up to speed at this point but just kind of knowing entrances and exits in your school uh, what routes they want you to take to drop your kids off um, don't want you to get out of the car and things like that another thing too that we, we were seeing a lot at the beginning of the school year which I haven't got a lot of uh, information from my resource officers at those schools Rapids Parish Sheriff's Office um, a lot of the kids were getting unbuckled before they got into the school zone or actually into the school property you need to keep your kids buckled up or have your seat belts on until you actually get on the school property which is you know private property because uh, we see a lot of people getting in uh, crashes on the main road and then they don't have their seat belts on because they were preparing to drop so their kids out of the off car. school. Okay. So we saw issues in that. So we're just going to just, you know, just reemphasize the little things like that. Just don't let your kids come out of their seatbelts too early. I know you're trying to get to work and all that and stuff like that too. Um, so the, that, that is the main thing is the car drop off. It, the thing is too, and, and especially in Alexandria, when we start talking about our kid drop off too, be, be conscious, and you may have already started seeing this. If you're going to be dropping your kids off, get on the shoulder of the roadway. It's not designed for that. The shoulder of the roadway is actually for it if you break down emer emergencies, but you don't want to stop in the middle of the road to get into those school zones. So if you can get on the shoulders, line up on the shoulders to go in those school zones, that's going to be a safer alternative than actually stopping in the roadway. And I know last year we had a big issue with that, and they reached out to us about the, some maybe some guidance on that and the law really doesn't say anything about school zones are allowed to, to do those things but I think just just part of being safe I would get out of those roadways and get onto those shoulders if you can but like I said in our area at least when I'm talking about Buckeye we don't have shoulders so that can get kind of crazy but the school has actually done a few things even out in that area to uh, wrap around the gym or wrap around a softball field just to kind of get more people off the roadway if they can. So just be very conscious of that as we're going through the school year. Those policies may change because, like I said, things do arise that we don't foresee and they may change those policies as the year's progressing on. So don't, uh, don't delete that email. You may want to check that one. It may be something that you may just be something that you're getting, but they may actually be changing some of those things as the weeks progress on. So just be conscious of that. Okay. What about a uh, car seat safety? Okay. Well, and we touched a little bit with Cabrini this morning about car seat stuff. Uh, one, we just talked about the school zone stuff. Don't take your kids' seat belts off too early. Um, a lot of people think they're putting their car seats in right, and it's kind of a, you know, even myself, before I took a class, that's a 40-hour class that you take to actually be car seat certified. And this is some of the common errors that we see is, you know, can you turn your kid around at X age? Can you turn uh, forward facing versus rear facing? Why does my seat wiggle up here, but it's really tight down here? Should I get something to, to, to strap that thing? I had a guy one time put a bolt in the bottom of his floorboard so he could bolt the seat down because it wiggled. Well, I needed to wiggle up here, but not necessarily at the belt path because we're talking about your kid taking the blunt of a crash. So a lot of that stuff matters. D did you convert your retractor and your seat belt from locking to um, a, uh, emergency mode that makes a difference when you're buckling your seatbelt in when I say retractors people go what are you talking about but you can switch those over from emergency mode uh, for adults could like when you lean forward really fast it, it locks but if you if you lean forward really slowly it doesn't that's for an adult mode that's an emergency mode when you take your seatbelt and you pull it all the way out and you hear that clicking noise when you put it back in you've just uh, converted your retractor over to a locking retractor which is for a uh, child restraint it's just little things like that that you see that people mess up on yeah you can get the belt path right because it actually has it labeled now uh, but did you actually switch those things over were you conscious of that stuff and it's just little things like that that may make a difference for your for your child in a crash because you don't want a child to take the blunt of a crash because some of those things need to be wiggling a certain way because of the um, the momentum of a crash so we see that a lot so if you can Cabrini does one every Thursday uh, 10 to 12 at Cabrini at the women's hospital and Rapids General does it every other uh, every second Wednesday of the month at the women's hospital from two to five but those are on our websites too so if you are unsure about how to put your car seat in because i can tell you right now 
some of them new manufacturers are making some really cool looking car seats that even I'm looking at like a spaceship. I'm like, <laughs> how did you even do that? It makes a stroller cool. It does that too. Yeah. So the thing is, are you reading those things? Are you up to date on how to install those things? Right. So just come by one of our fitting stations and we can help you with that. And it doesn't hurt to double check too. I dared you and said, mm -hmm. I swear I all my car seats are right. Yeah. Yes. But, but I had one thing that was wrong and I didn't know. You just don't know. If you don't know, you, you just don't know. Right. It's, but so we can teach you a lot of that stuff. And like I said, uh, we've partnered up with a lot of good partners, Cabrini and Rapids. Uh, and we've really made some really strides in those because like I said, down in my, my, my other areas of the state, we get a lot more people asking for help with that stuff. I think we have a tendency, I'm, I'm going to call it God's country. It's North Louisiana. I mean, I'm just going to say what it is. Uh, we try to figure things out on our own sometimes. And it's okay to do that, but sometimes you just don't know. Ask. Be, be willing to ask those questions and you'll be surprised what answers you get. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Now, uh, looking at vaping now for the older <laughs> kids and that kind of safety too, what are some good tips for parents out there when it comes to older kids being exposed to vaping? Now, I'll say this. I have a 14-year-old daughter as well as you have a 14-year-old son probably. Um, I, you know, will they lie to you? Absolutely. The little angels will lie to you, right? So my thing is that I try to monitor everything that they do very closely. And I know it's kind of, uh, I don't, I'm not scolding nobody for the way they want to parent their kid. Everybody's different, right? But uh, like I tell my little girl, all your stuff belongs to me. And I monitor it very, very closely. And we tried to set up with some apps, me and you have in the past. And, that, and the apps are a whole different thing. Uh, we, we could talk about that in great detail about monitoring what your kids are doing, right? So it mainly is about monitoring what they're doing. Who, who are they hanging around? Are, are you that involved in what you're doing? Does it take a lot of time and agony to look through a cell phone? Absolutely it does, because some of them apps, I can't even figure out how to open it. <laughs> Gotta figure it out. But, you know, are you spending the time to actually figure that stuff out? Because all her stuff actually belongs to me, and I'm gonna look through that very intensely. Uh, we've talked to the schools about that. Schools are having big problems with the vaping stuff, and I, a lot of my parents maybe do and don't understand. Vaping is a very addictive thing, because the things that are in those vapes are, are designed to, to make you addicted. And the cigarette companies, and not getting big into that too, they own most of all these vaping things, right? And they saw, or whatever they saw, the marketing plan of it to get your kids uh, to smoke. I, I don't even gonna get involved in that. But when we start talking about putting hot vapors into your lungs. And my medical staff, uh, the Rapids Regional Medical Center actually partners up with us and we do a lot of vaping presentations at our schools, is that they call it Evoli. Evoli is a medical condition for your lungs now. So when you put hot vapors into your lungs and it causes uh, things to happen, there's really not a cure for that. Because when we, we used to get wet lung, it's pneumonia. It's not rocket science. I'm not the smartest dude in the world. My wife says I am. No, she doesn't. But um, <laughs> that, you know, when you got pneumonia, you could go to the hospital, it's a bacterial infection, you, yeah. you get better. Or, or, try to get better but when you get a problem in your lungs with, with with vaping there's not a cure for that there's not anything that they can give you because it's not a bacterial infection you put that into your body and a lot of my young people don't understand is is that when you hurt yourself you don't go on top of the donors list if you if you intentionally cause something for something bad to happen to yourself like a, a smoker or something like that it's gonna be very hard for you to get a lung transplant when you did it to yourself. And they don't understand that, well, I'm young, I can get a, a transplant, and you might, but you're not gonna go on the top of that list. And I've talked to my medical staff about that because that's just the way it works. I mean, if you catch tuberculosis or something like that and, you're, and you damage something, that's not really your fault for you catching something. But if you intentionally do something to yourself, kind of like my, my uncle, my uncle died from liver failure from drinking a lot. Well, he chose to drink. You know, he caused himself to have liver failure. He did not get a liver transplant and he passed away uh, years and years and years ago. So th that, that's the problem that our young people don't see. It's like they think they're invincible, but they're not. But coming back to my parents' side of it is, you really need to monitor what your kids are doing. And yes. I hate to be like that. I fall short, short of that. I'm sure you do too, but it, it, it's a pain to do it, but it has to be done. Right. It has to be done. You have to monitor what they're, what they're doing. Absolutely. Well, Casey, those are some really great safety tips. We appreciate you coming on the show so much. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Appreciate y'all. Of course. And we'll be right back. More Good Days and Law right after this break.